5.1 radical rational expressions, a lot of this is going to be reviewed to you, hopefully. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, square roots, how to combine them and all that. We're going to talk about what rules for exponents. So again, hopefully all this will be reviewed for you. Um, <coughs> some of it we actually did yesterday, I believe, when we talked about, or the other day when we talked about imaginary numbers. Example 1. Notice I don't even start with notes, we just start with examples. Example 1 says simplify each expression. Square root of 12 times the square root of 32. Get comfortable working with square roots. Uh, when, when I say working with square roots, about how to, how to split them up, how to, how to change them. Um, you can multiply square roots. You can multiply square roots. So actually, you have two different ways you can work this problem. If you want to, square root of 12 times square root of 32, you can go ahead and multiply that out, get the square root of uh, 300 and whatever. The easiest way to do it, though, is go ahead and split And let's review again how to split. Square root of 12 is the same thing as the square root of 4 times the square root of 3, which is 2, because square root of 4 is 2, root 3. So here you have 2 root 3 times square root of 32. is the square root of 16 and the square root of 2 is 32, which will be 4 times root 2. So you have 2 root 3 times 4 root 2. Any questions on how I got that part? So here we go. Now we have 2 times square root of 3 times 4 times square root of 2. Again, I want you to view this as being 4 things being multiplied together. According to commutative property, we can multiply in any order. So 2 times 4 is 8. The square root of 3 times square root of 2 is square root of 6. Is there anything else you can do to that? No. Square root of 6, you can check to see if it will break up or if you can split it up. 3 and 2 and 6 and 1 is all you got. You don't know the square root of any of those, so that's it. Next problem. Square root of 18 plus the square root of 75. Can you add square roots? Is that the square root of 93? can't add square roots. You can multiply them all day, you can divide them all day, but you can't add subtract them unless this. Watch what I can do with this. Square root of 18 is the square root of, we don't know square root of 3, square root of, what do we know the square root of? 9 times the square root of 2, so that's going to be 3 root 2, makes sense, plus square root of 75 is square root of 25, square root of 3, which is 5 root 3, is that right? um, which you can't add together. The only time you could combine, I was thinking it would come out to be something I could combine there. The only time you could combine, if that had been like something root 3 plus something root 3, then you can put them together. Like if I'd have had um, 3 root 2 plus 4 root 2. That's kind of like 3x plus 4x would be 7 root 2. That's the only time you can add or subtract them is when the root stuff's the same. So this is this is as far as it'll go. Yeah, can't combine anything there. They threw me out. Yeah. Like I said, if the roots were the same, put them together. Next one, cube root of 27x to the ninth y to the eighth. And hopefully, like I said, a lot of this stuff you will remember. Cube root of 27x to the ninth y to the eighth. You can split that apart if you want to work with it a piece at a time. You could actually split that into cube root of 27, cube root of yx to the ninth, cube root of y to the eighth. And be careful, we're not talking square roots here. Um, and then you can go a step further and split this any way that you want to to where we can take the cube root. Yeah, cube root of 27, we know that. That's 3. Okay, cube root of x to the ninth. Let's talk about that. It's Ask yourself what a cube root is. Like the reason we could do the cube root of 27, that's what number multiplies by itself three times to give us 27. 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. Cube root of x to the ninth is what can I multiply by itself three times to give me x to the ninth? What's x squared times x squared times x squared? x to the sixth. Oh, what am I doing? You said a. x to the sixth. Remember how to multiply like basis, different exponents, which this is kind of already getting into the next section, which is weird. Uh, remember how to do that. So what's the cube root of x to the ninth? Can you tell me that? x to the third. If you did x to the third times x to the third times x to the third, that is x to the ninth. 
So therefore the cube root is what multiplies by itself three times to give you x to the ninth is x to the third. Any questions? Did you know that? Mm, let's, okay, it's, you're going to have to split this because can we do the cube root of y to the eighth? So we're going to split it, yeah. What, what can we do the cube root of? Y to the sixth. We can do cube root of y to the sixth. So we're going to split this into the cube root of y to the sixth times the cube root of y squared. Mm -hmm. Any question on how I did that? If you multiply that back out, do you not get back to here? That's the reason I can't split it. Cube root of y to the sixth. If you look at y squared times y squared times y squared, you do get y to the sixth. So the cube root of y to the sixth is y squared. Can you do the cube root of y squared? No. So you leave it as, okay, cube root of y to the sixth is y squared, and leave the other. Cube root of y squared, leave that underneath. There's the simplified form. 3x to the third y squared times the cube root of y squared. <coughs> Any questions? I don't know. You can't simplify that. You can... You can simplify like the cube root of y to the third. You could simplify the cube root of y to the sixth, the cube root of y to the ninth, uh, any multiple of three. What about fourth roots? Cube root, because I, I know what it is. Because y squared times y squared times y squared. Yeah, so that's the reason. And cube root of y squared you can't do. Fourth roots, when we start talking about fourth roots, I can do the fourth root of x to the fourth. You can do the fourth root of what's the next one you can do? x to the eighth, and twelfth, and sixteenth. And, and I'll show you in a second an, an easier way possibly to be able to do that. Next problem. Square root of x minus four, square root of x plus four. Notice anything about those two things? What's the first thing that you, when you look at that, uh, we are going to fold it, but do you know, notice anything about the two things that's inside there? They're, they're going to cross out their conjugates. Right, minus 4 plus 4. <clears throat> so, but we are going to full. We've got to do the square root of x times square root of x, which is, is that not the square root of x squared? So it's just x. Makes sense. Square root of x times positive 4, and this is kind of unnecessary, this step is, because they're just going to cross out. Negative 4 times the square root of x is negative 4 square roots of x. Negative 4 times positive 4 is negative 16. Those cross out, so it leaves you with x minus 16. So, um, if I ask you if x minus 16 is factorable, could you factor x minus 16? Well, yeah, kind of can. Because, but, you, but it would be this. x minus 16, you could kind of factor like difference of squares. Why you would want to, I don't know wouldn't really want to, but x minus 16 is the square root of x minus 4, square root of x plus 4. It's kind of like difference of squares, but again, that's just extra information. But we just fold there. Next problem, uh, we're talking about fractional exponents, and this is what I was going back to, I'm going to go back and work to see again in just a second. But fractional exponents, hopefully you remember this uh, a little bit from last year. If you have like 16 to the 3 halves power, this is the best way I have to show you. 16 to the 3 halves power can be rewritten. Uh, whatever's on bottom is the root that you're taking, so the second root, we don't have to put a 2 there, that's the same thing as a square root, of 16, and what I like to do is put it all raised to whatever the top power is. The square root of 16 to the third power. Y'all remember how to change those? Which, that would be 4 to the third, which is 64. Let's uh, do the couple of examples. Well, that's, that's the first one. 81 to the 3 fourths. Again, the bottom goes where? What root? It's the fourth root of to the what power? Good. Questions? Makes sense how to rewrite it. The bottom one is whatever root you're taking. The top one is raised to that power. Fourth root of 81, anybody know that? It's 3, and you still have to the third power, so 27. 81 to the 3 fourths power is 27. So while you are copying that down, go back to the problem we worked before. Third root of 27x to the ninth. Third root of 27x to the ninth, y to the eighth. You could split that into, again, cube root of 27. 
And instead of doing x cube root of x to the ninth, I'm going to do x to the ninth raised to the. How do you write a cube root? What what exponent would that be? Because think back up here. The third third root would go on the bottom, but what power are you raising it to? It's to the one third power. A cube root is one third power, and be able to go back and forth between those two, because it'll come in handy. And you've got y to the eighth raised to the one third power as well. So I just split that just like I did a while ago. Cube root of twenty seven is three. Now does it make sense why um, x to the ninth, the cube root of x to the ninth is x to the third? How do you do powers to powers? That's what we're fixing to start. You powers to powers, you multiply them. So nine over one times one over three, what is that? Nine thirds, which is three. So you see you get the same answer that way. 9 over 3, 9 divided by 3 is 3. And then uh, this would be y to the 8 thirds, which um, that's actually y to the 2 and 2 thirds. And this this one's a little bit more difficult, but I, I just, just for kicks, I want to show you. That's the same thing as y to the second times y to the 2 thirds because uh, like bases, you can add those exponents, right? So you, do you see how I split that? Two and two thirds would be y to the second times y to the two thirds, which is the same answer we got as before as well. Y to the second, and then we had y to the two thirds, which is the cube root of y squared is what we had left. With that said, moving on. Um,